guys, how you doing? I'm today doing some glare guards. Um, so a while ago we machined um, some new tops that were going to be part of a zoom light which we'll do a separate video on, basically this. And uh, this is the initial design for the glare guard, like this uh, sort of thing. So what I'm doing at the moment is we're just tweaking the design um, so that it provides a better overall finish. So this one uh, Max well, it's still a bit of burr on there, but Max suggested putting a chamfer on there, which is what I've just done. Um, I'm just trying to get rounded corners around the top edges here. Um, and then hopefully we need to just, last thing we need to do is start checking O-ring fit on here, because basically this t is held on by an O-ring. And then hopefully that'll be the glare guard done. We'll see. So when I'm doing something new, if you're wondering how many prototypes or bits and pieces we go through, this is probably a fairly typical example. Um, and there's at least half of that on top of that that got like scrapped because it was in half, kind of like this. Um, and that's the, part of that's because we don't use any cam software at all. Um, we produce so little in the way of new things that are like really out there, should I say, um, that cam software is kind of unnecessary and it makes more sense for us to program it by hand on the, on the lathe itself, plus we learn more from that. Um, so, you know, these are the re that's the result of doing it. We have to scrap a few more parts, but we get there in the end. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, say, I think master cam is something like 12 to 15 grand a year. Um, so I don't know if it's a year or if you just own it outright, but either way, it's, um, it's a lot of money to spend if you're doing pretty much the same parts all the time, or pretty much mostly the same parts anyway. Um, yeah, so we can't remember the next bit. Right, so here we have a new mocked up top. Now it is only mocked up, um, but basically just give you an idea again of that shape that we talked about in the stories. Now the idea is, is that it will work with this glare guard. So, um, simple idea, um, a cut out shell basically is held on by an O-ring. So the installation of this glare guard um, basically end up being like kind of an aftermarket product unless obviously we're asked to actually produce it um, at the same time. But literally the O-ring pops on and the glare guard pops on like that. So it gives you that kind of glare operation and you can then rotate it if need be from the main head, which is obviously quite useful. So that's where we're at, at the moment. So guys, it is about half 10 in the evening on Thursday night and um, I'm just finishing off Louise Tarlin Electrical's um, uh, spike light that's going to have the um, glare guard on it. So um, this this fitting was underwater in that tank uh, for a little over 24 hours um, and I think what I'll do is I'll put in some of my Instagram stuff to show you what was going on there. And of course, the last and most important test, aside from obviously, I think I need to clean this tube, is the two meter underwater test. Yeah. So we'll leave that overnight and pick that up at some point tomorrow evening. And that's what you like to see. It's completely, oops, completely and utterly dry. So yeah. Um, right now, what I've got to do is assemble 
the hinge which is hiding from me right now i've obviously misplaced it somewhere oh, if you're wondering about the drink there it's because uh it's one of our guys birthdays it's his 18th on saturday um so i'll be treating him early tomorrow um with a few ciders and he likes his coffee as well so um we've got some we've got an espresso machine in here so we've got him some uh decent capsules for it uh hopefully they're decent anyway <laughs> i don't know i don't drink coffee so i'm not that sort of person now i literally can't find this hinge so i'm going to find this hinge and i'll start putting this together right um so we've got our what we call the t insert and our spring that goes in the top here and that just pushes down and that just gives us something smooth for the ball joint to to run against and then we have a insert which we've both We've machined a few times and we've also 3D printed. And I just want to see if I can find one of the ones that are 3D printed because, here's one, there's an example. Um, basically because the 3D printed ones are a bit kinder on the cable. Um, although we'll probably end up machining some out of uh, the Actel stuff at some point. But it's really nice. It kind of sort of, it's like a little insert that finishes it. Its actual purpose is to help push up the, uh, or give us tension against the ball joint. So if I can find a green rod, uh, here we go. Um, we actually do have templates for these green rods, but this one ta was taped for powder coating. So anyway, I will just screw her in. That's it, that's that bit together. Um, and it's as simple as this lead just needs to run through here. I'll say it's simple and then I won't get this through. No, there we go, we got it through. Um, and I just pull that nice and easy through there. So that right there is how the spike lights are gonna look at the moment. Um, and that gives us the ability to put our glare guard, oops, <laughs> hang on a second, we don't do it like that, we do O-ring first, then glare guard, and put our glare guard on top, like so. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go set up outside on that six meter tall um, tree that's just on the green, just out by my neighbors, it's his tree. Um, and we'll run a really long lead throughout here and we'll go get some video and also some photos and um, I can show you what it looks like. I'm gonna to have to change the lens on the camera so it's gonna get a bit narrower, um, but it gives me a little bit more um, power with regards to what is going on there. See you in a sec. Right, I've run my lead out. Now I'm gonna go a little bit quiet because obviously my neighbors are asleep, etc. Yeah, <laughs> the joys. So you can see the lead just runs over the top here. Let's turn this light off. There we go, not so bright. Okay, so it's gone really dark. So you might not be able to see what I'm about to do, but if you can hear me, I'll, you, I'll set you up here. And stripping stuff in the dark is interesting to say the least. Um, now what did I just do with the way goes? Crap. <laughs> Hang on, let's give you a light. There we go. Okay, pop this here for a second. I literally can't see a thing. It's pitch black out here. Almost pitch black. There are some street lights out towards the, um, like further down the road. Not at this end. In a minute, though, it's going to get really bright because let me just show you something quickly, just in case you haven't seen it. If I wire this, that's the right way round. If I wire it the wrong way round, check this out. Oops. <laughs> so if I wire this the wrong way round, look. It's red. It tells you, oh, I've wired it the wrong way around. You can also call it the Halloween edition. So if you want to run these lights back to front, you can. Not a problem at all. Anyway, let's flip it around the right way. There we go. So, 
I reckon positioning wise that is pretty good so that's about one can't really spot this down because the ground is so hard but that's about uh, a meter 1.2 out something like that hopefully you can kind of see so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set the tripod up and um, we'll set the tripod up and we'll get these pictures going bear with so this image I took is without the glare guard and this is with the glare guard. As you can see, the light just disappears completely. It just makes perfect sense as to why you'd have one. This is the tree during the day um, without the foliage that it's got now.